oh my goodness me it is a new part of the map look at this place Hello everybody and welcome to Great Games Live Plays The Hits, the series where I take on the very best video games of all time. And today I'm back with another video from my playthrough of Subnautica. Now, if you were this last time out, you will know that we finally made it to dry land for the very first time in this game. We found an island where there was evidence that some humans have been exploring this planet before us. Today, we are going to try and get off this island, get back to our life pod and see what awaits us beneath the waves once again. Let's see how we get on. Well, as you can see, we have got a radio message to listen to. And my plan was to head back to my life pod to do just that. But I'm just going to do a little bit more exploring around here because I have a feeling that I've missed a few things, especially as... There is a ladder in this base that I haven't climbed down yet. So that is exactly what I'm going to do straight away. Um, okay, we've got one of those strange crab things around here. I'm going to not go near that this time because uh, killing them took a lot of effort last time out. And I don't particularly want to get involved with that again at the moment. Let's go down the ladder. What have we got? Oh, yes, we've got an abandoned PDA. It is Paul Torgal's log number one, marooned. Fantastic. We can take a look at that momentarily. What else have we got down here? We've got a container with a battery inside. Well, we'll take that. That'll be very useful going forward. And if I can get over this strange little bump in the corridor, there is another abandoned PDA. That is the Degassi voice log number two, Storm. And we will take a look at that as well momentarily. But we're going to get out of this base, get away from the crab thing, because we do not like them. And we're going to just head over this way because uh, we haven't fully explored the island as yet, I'll be honest with you. So we're just going to have a little look around and see what we can find. What on earth is up here? It looks like we've got a little cave going through here. And what's this? We've got another abandoned PDA. And that is the Gassy Voice Log number three, Aftermath. Okay, let us have a look at what these PDAs are saying. Okay, we are going to start with this one. It is the Gassy Voice Log number two, Storm. We've already listened. Okay, here we go. We have got Degassi voice log number two, Storm here, ready to go. We've already read the first one in the last video. So here we go. We start off with Paul. Son, I said, wait for the storm to pass. Your life's more valuable to me than a plant patch. Bart, you stop being in charge when the ship you were captaining sunk. Paul, I'll stop being in charge when you take charge of yourself. Marguerite, say chief, chief. Paul, what? Marguerite, do you know how to drain those grow beds of 40 tons of stormwater? Or how to conjure food from the air? Paul, I know how to prioritise. Marguerite, I'm just saying, what's your boy's life worth to you today? If tomorrow you're going to be so hungry, you start wondering what he tastes like. Let him go deal with the plants. Paul, son, go deal with the plants. Bart Torgle has disembarked the habitat. Paul, interfere with my family again and when rescue arrives, I will leave you here. Do you understand me? Marguerite. No rescue coming, Chief. Not in time. And no staying here, neither. This rain keeps falling. Sooner or later, this place will be buried. Only choice we got is whether to get buried with it. OK, we've got Degassi voice log number three here. Aftermath. Let's see what goes on. Marguerite, you see, Chief? You brought us to this sodden planet. Told us we'd see a lush payday. Now what do we got? Some six weeks later, a dead crew, a habitat that's half buried, food washed away. Paul, I suppose the executive decisions would be better left to someone with your extensive experience of hitting people in the face. Marguerite, I know enough not to take unscheduled detours to uncharted planets. That's something you don't want to learn the hard way. Paul, easy to judge my decisions in hindsight. Harder to come up with a plan of your own. Marguerite, got one already. We take what we can carry and hunker down in a cave somewhere. I scouted a site, couple hundred metres deep. Lots of metal deposits. Paul, how do you imagine we'd live? Marguerite, 
with ready access to building materials? Like damn queens! A couple of water filters, a bioreactor, fresh fish, but chief, we'll eat seaweed salad and drink our own urine if that's what it takes. All that matters is, do you got something better? Paul, send the coordinates to my PDA. I'll review your proposal. Okay, voice log number four. Curious discovery. Here it is. Paul, what is that thing? Marguerite, I don't know. I found it outside in the sand. Paul, part of another ship? Marguerite, none I've ever seen. Bart, it's not even scratched. Paul, don't fall around with it. It might be worth something. Marguerite, stand down, chief. If it were going to crumble to dust, it would have done so when I picked it up. Bart, it's glowing. Paul, we're not the first people to come to this planet. Marguerite, people, maybe. Could be aliens, could be the damn sea monsters for all we know. One thing for sure, we ain't going to find out by staying here. And now we have got Paul Toggle's log number one, Marooned. Let's take a look. Chief's log, five weeks since the crash. The only other survivors are my son, Bart and Mater. The cut price mercenary I commissioned for the journey. After days drifting in the life pod, rain hammering the roof, the weather cleared and we washed up here. I had made a salvage the gassy wreck, set Bart to finding us a stable source of food. His education is paying off sooner than I'd anticipated. Our only problem is Maida. She says the weather's going to turn. I say she's finding excuses to risk our lives. I imagine she's not going to weaken her life without a physical altercation, and she's itching for a fight. In every judgement she makes things go from bad to worse. If she had my experience, she'd have more faith. Humans have spent millennia specialising in how to shackle nature to our will. This planet won't cause us any new problems. My one task now is to keep us alive as comfortably as possible until the insurance company arranges rescue. In this part of space, that could be months or even years. Well, and with that, it is time, I think, to leave this island, head back to our life pod and listen to the radio message that we have awaiting us. Let's get back to our sea moth. Well, here we are. We are back at this pool where we entered the island. Our sea moth is there, but there is something else here as well that I missed when we came here earlier. It is a PDA. Another one. We've got a rendezvous voice log right here. And that is what we're going to take a look at right now. Here we go. We've got CTOU. We have to board the Aurora, repair the long range comms, make contact with the other survivors. We can't be the only two that made it. Officer Keen, those are not the orders the captain gave me, and they are not the orders I'm giving you. CTOU, this isn't chain of command, it's survival. Officer Keen, my obligations as acting commander don't turn on their convenience. Get out of the water. CTOU, if I get into trouble, I send you my coordinates. Officer Keen, I can't let you go alone. CTOU, then come with me. Officer Keen, you don't leave me much choice. Received emergency transmission from 2nd Officer Keen two hours after last activity. Officer Keen, rendezvous was a failure. Intercepted a transmission from Altera HQ. Seems they sent a data package to the Aurora. We were intercepted by a Leviathan-class predator before we could reach the ship. Consider the CTO and I lost at sea. Be safe. Keen, out. Okay, well, it sounds like things did not end particularly well for Keen and you. But there is something else I have noticed. Thanks to the logs that we have picked up, there is a new location on our map. The proposed Degassi habitat, 250 metres down, over a kilometre in that direction. Once we have been back to our life pod, and listen to the radio message there. We are going to check that out. All right, here we go. We have left dry land far behind us. And we are back at our life pod. Let's park the sea moth here. Get out. And get back in here. For the first time in what feels like forever. Here we go. We have got a radio message to listen to. Uploaded to PDA. 
Okay, so we have got another life pod to find. Um, has that been added to my map? It has indeed. Life pod 13 carrying high priority passengers remains. Well, 1200 meters in that direction. But it looks like we can get there in the sea moth. So that might be something to do in a bit, actually. But first, but first, there are actually a few things that I'd like to make today. Um, and one of them is the radiation suit. We need some fiber mesh and we need some lead in order to be able to do that. Um, and ideally, I'd also like to make a compass. Now, we need some copper wire and a wiring kit for that. So I'm going to head out into the ocean. We're going to do some exploring. I'm going to try and find some bits and bobs that will help me make these things. And hopefully that will make our exploring just that little bit easier going forward. Let's get right in about it. Well, I tell you what, we have got another radio message. Would you believe it? They are coming thick and fast. So we are going to head right back to the live pod and listen to it. My goodness me. OK, out we go. Here we go. Uh, let me let me put my <laughs> sea glide away for a moment. Here we go. What's it saying? Aurora, we're approaching the planet now. We have a landing site for you that's... Well, it's better than the alternatives. We've sent you the coordinates. It'll take us a couple of days to align our orbit. We should be able to establish direct contact with you during that time. Then we're coming in to get you. Cross your fingers, the weather holds. Don't leave us waiting. Sunbeam out. The Sunbeam is on its way and it will be here in just under 40 minutes time. That's real time. Um, so that's fine. We can still do a little bit of exploring before it arrives and hopefully, hopefully rescues us. OK, let's get back in the sea, shall we? OK, so the first thing we're going to try and make is the fiber mesh that we need for the radiation suit. Now, I believe that if I cut some of the leaves from this creep vine, that is what we will need to make it. Uh, I think we'll need about four samples. One, two, three, four. Fantastic. Let's head back to our sea moth. I think a stalker literally just grazed our nose there, which is a bit of a concern. I'm going to head back to the sea moth, get back to our life pod and try and make this fiber mesh. All right, here we go. Not too far to go, fewer than 100 metres, fantastic. We'll get there in no time in the sea moth. Stop there, stop there. Let's get out. All right, can we make fibre mesh? We can, fantastic. Wonderful. Okay, so I think we now need just some lead and some silver and we will be able to make uh, the radiation suit and the compass. I'm not sure where I'm going to find this lead and silver. I'm going to be honest with you. But we're going to head in this direction and see what we can find. All right, what have we got here? We have got some silver. Magical. What's that? Some lead. Absolutely brilliant. And some more lead. I think we may need one more bit of silver. Is it going to be here? No, that's some gold. But there's another. There's another outcrop here. And there is some silver. We might just have what we need. Let's head back to the life pod and hopefully make these items. Welcome back to the life pod. Here we go. Let's see what we can make. We're going to make some copper wire. There we go. We are going to make a wiring kit. Now, is that it? Is that it? We can make the radiation suit. Fantastic. All right. Now, what we are also looking to make, of course, was the compass. Let's sort that out straight away. And there we go. Now, as you can see, we have got a compass at the top of our screen. And we can see in which direction we are headed. That's rather wonderful. I think that will come in very useful indeed. Now, 
We have still got more than half an hour until the Sunbeam arrives. So what we are going to do, we are going to head out, try and find LifePod 13. Of course, it's carrying a high priority passenger's remains, as we found out earlier. Let's get over there. Okay, here we go. We are going towards LifePod 13. It is over a kilometre away from us. So it is a it's a fair old distance. Um, and I'm assuming it is in a new area of the map that we haven't travelled to before. Oh my god, we got stalkers, we got stalkers. I'm just gonna just gonna head around those. Um but yeah, we're just gonna head over in this direction and see what we can find. Okay, we are getting closer now. We are getting closer. Oh my goodness me. It is a new part of the map. Look at this place. Yowzers. Well, this would be a fun place to explore. We haven't got time for that because there is a life pod right here with us that we have got to explore. Okay, I don't know if these things are friendly or not. Um... So we're going to steer clear of them for the moment. Let's head down there. Oh, okay. Something ripped the top open, I think. Okay, so we've got an abandoned PDA. We'll take that. Is there anything else in here? Doesn't look like it. It looks like that's all there is, but that's fine. Head back to the Seamoth. All right, well, goodness me. This is quite a fascinating little area. You know what? We've still got half an hour till the sunbeam arrives. I'm going to have a little look round here. I've just spotted something down here. I have no idea what it is, but it looks like a steering column or something like that. We're going to go and investigate. We're going to use our scanner find out what it is. What on earth is this? Cyclops bridge fragment. We will scan that. Okay. So we need three of those. Fantastic. All right. Well, as we've just seen, the Cyclops looks like a massive, massive submarine. And we are going to want to make that at some point. Welcome aboard, Captain. But it looks like we are going to have to find all sorts of fragments to be able to do that. I'm going to have a have a quick little scout around. Maximum depth reached. Hull damage imminent. That's not good. <laughs> I'm going to stay above 200 meters if I can. Um, but we're going to have a scout around and see if there's any more fragments. Um, and then... You know, if we can't find much else, then we'll head back to the life pod. But, uh, wow, this is all rather exciting. Okay, we've got something else here. What's this? It's another Cyclops bridge fragment. We will take that. Fantastic. We've got two out of three now. We only need one more. Only need one more. Goodness knows where it is, but we're going to try and find it. We are going to try and find it. Well, what do we have here? Is it another bridge fragment? I really hope so. Oh, it's a Cyclops hull fragment. Okay. We need three of those as well. Oh my goodness me, there's stuff all over the place here. This is sensational. Okay, looks like we've got something else here as well. What is this? There's another hull fragment. Okay, we've got two out of three of those as well. That's wonderful. So we need one more bridge fragment and one more hull fragment. I don't know if there's anything else to the Cyclops. But, uh, yeah. What's, what's this over here? Is that something? Oh, here we go. There we have it. We've got the hull blueprint now. So we just need to find another bridge fragment. As I say, I'm not sure if that's all we would need to find out the ingredients for the Cyclops. But we're getting there. We are getting there. This is absolute magic. 
Okay, what have we got down here? We we might be in business here. What is it? A power transmitter fragment. Okay. Well, we'll take that. I was hoping it was going to be a bridge fragment, but we will take the power transmitter fragment like you wouldn't believe. Uh, that's great. Okay. Fantastic. Here we go. We've got something here. What is it? It is the final bridge fragment. Fantastic. Absolutely wonderful. Right. Let's get right back into the Seamoth. Beautiful. Welcome aboard, Captain. Well, I've got to say, we are going to leave this place behind now. <laughs> I've done a lot of exploring around here. I have caused some relatively serious damage to my uh, sea moth in the process by hitting some of these structures. Um, but we're going to go back to the life pod. I'm going to gather my thoughts and then I'm probably going to head to the Sunbeam Rendezvous point. Well, that was all a little bit productive, wasn't it? We managed to find yet another sunken life pod. Uh, we crafted a radiation suit and a compass, and we found six fragments of the Cyclops. Now it looks like the Sunbeam is just about to come and try and pick us up. But that will have to wait for a future episode of Great Games Live Plays the Hits. Until then, I want to say thank you very much for watching. It is truly appreciated, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye, everybody.